Dear friends, living on light is a question which has been discussed so seriously in India and some other parts of the world. And the most recent case, of course, is a person whose name is Prahlad Jani. Prahlad Jani is one of the thousands of self-styled holy men in India. According to his legend, he was born in 1929 in the state of Rajasthan and left his home as a child to go and live in the jungle. There the Hindu goddess Ambaji appeared to him at the age of 11. He became her devotee. In her honor, he changed his outfit and started wearing his trademark red sari, golden bangles, a nose ring, and crimson flowers in his long hair like a female. Ambaji caused another more sensational change in him also. If you want to believe him, he completely stopped eating and drinking ever since the goddess touched his tongue with her, with her finger, he claims, a liquid would drop from the hole of his palate and sustain him. It was kind of heavenly nectar. Hindus would call it Amrit. There was no need for him to eat or drink anymore. So he did neither take a crumb of food nor a drop of water for some 70 years, as told to us in April 2010. That means roughly since the outbreak of Second World War, that's a fantastic story. If it was true, it would disprove the basic principles of biology and the medical science, and we would have to rewrite our scientific textbooks. Of course, it is not. It must be assumed that the man who insists it was is either a psychopath, suffering from massive reality loss, or a small-time fraud, pretending supernatural capacities in order to gain some money, power, or publicity. He could be a social outcast also, a freak, a player, who takes an acting an absurd story for his own psychological reasons as a kind of existentialistic clown. The borders of these categories are often very fluid. In India, all traits of this kind of characters are traditionally accommodated under somewhat shabby, very elastic umbrella of holiness. There are sadhus, fakirs, and eccentric ascetics whose colorful picture postcard images help selling incredible India as a tourist attraction. Some of these characters are less and some are more dangerous. Some just fade away once they are exposed. I hope you know the story. I've had a holy man directly on the television who said who could kill anybody with some mantras. And I said, okay, try and kill me. <laughs> so he was reluctant. He was afraid uh, he would be charged in a case. I said, no problem, I would sign for it. And I, I ridiculed him, challenged him, and uh, made him to start the mantric I mean, session and tried for one hour continuously, and nothing works. And then she started coming and shaking my head, and I mean, then brought a knife, I called for a knife. <laughs> I said, that's a conventional way to kill me. <laughs> one should not try that. And well, I mean, of course, he, <laughs> he brought the knife and put it in front of my eyes and moved and, and uh, wanted to scare me, of course. And at the end of a long session of two hours, he said, well, I think you are protected by some holy men secretly and you are working on them. I said, I'm an atheist. <laughs> so he said, okay, there is an ultimate challenge. You have to come in the night. <laughs> Five sessions, he would go to drink alcohol. He would sleep with a lady. He would put a lot of, uh, I, mean, I mean, ash from the burial place. Then I would sit in front of him and other tantrics and uh, well, the session would be for one hour, and the last nine minutes would be very crucial. He would uh, start the final rituals, and then in three minutes, I would get crazy. Next three minutes, I would faint down, and next three minutes, I would die. No reversal back. I said, done, fine. And I sat in front of him, 
And the television was very tricky. You know, they, stuff, they had five hours to announce this thing. They said, will Sanal Idamaraku survive this night? Watch at 11 o'clock. <laughs> so every 10 minutes they repeated this announcement and it had perhaps the highest ever viewership in Indian television. So people wanted <laughs> me to see uh, dying or alive. And uh, this was the session where he was trying on me. And uh, he made little dove, uh, I mean, a small doll with wheat powder, and uh, then stabbed it with some knife, then put a lot of nails on the head, heart, cut his stomach, burn it, boil it, bury it, a lot of things he has done. And ultimately, he stabbed so brutally on it. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens, and I just laughed. I always said in the, pro I mean, the television program, the most important protection in such a situation when a tantric tries to attack you is just laugh at you. And I did it enormously, and it worked very well, because the body language that I used at the time has been helping to open millions of people's eyes. So these people vanish very fast, because he has been one of the most popular tantrics on Indian television, but he's no more seen. Ouch. <laughs> Let me put Prahlad Jani's claim, I mean, in a realistic frame. Experts say a healthy adult can abstain from food for 21 days without major damages, provided he has access to sufficient drinking water. If possible, enrich with salt. Mahatma Gandhi's great fast for peace between Hindus and Muslims lasted 21 days. But there are many cases of people who survived far longer without food. In 2003, the action artist David Blaine spent 44 days in a glass box hanging over London's River Thames, allegedly without solid food. He lost 25 kilograms of weight and had to be treated in a hospital after his stunt. The German RAF prisoner Holger Mainz died in 1974 after a hunger strike of 53 days. Bobby Sands one of the Irish Republican hunger strikes in uh, uh, strike case in eight, 1981 died after 66 days. The Irish playwright and politician Terence McSwinley in 1920 on a hunger strike in British prison held for the 74 days before he died. Somewhere by 80 days we seem to reach a limit. I could not find any well-documented case of somebody who surveyed far longer than this without any food. Deprivation of water kills faster. It occasionally reported, it's occasionally reported that people survived in low temperatures for some 10 days without drinking, for example, after being buried alive in an earthquake. When a court judgment decided in 2005 to stop her food and water intake, Teresia died after 13 days of dehydration. The longest survivor in recent times seems to be Andreas Mihavex of Austria. In 1979, police forgot him for 18 days in a prison cell. During this time, he got neither food nor water, but drank some drops of condensed water running from the wall. Prahlad Jani's fasting tale could have been could have been taken with a pinch of salt. For decades, he was just a local unicum, sitting in the hermit cave of a rainforest in Gujarat. But suddenly, he became a star. In 2003, he was picked up by Dr. Sudhir Shah, a neurophysician and the head of Ahmedabad's Sterling Hospital, who made his case a cornerstone in the edifice of his scientific theory that humans could survive for years on a diet of air and sunshine only. In November 2003, Dr. Shah and his team kept the fakir for 10 days without food and water under strict medical observation in a sealed room in Sterling Hospital. My proposal to join the investigation with a team of experts from the Indian Rationalist Association gathered some media support. We had quite a good track record of exposing wrong fasting claims. Many people still remembered the widely reported case of Kumari Neeraja 
from Jalaun district in Uttar Pradesh state. The young woman claimed to be the reincarnation of Saraswati, the Hindu goddess of letters and literature. She was staying alone in a small hut and claimed she did not take any food for five years and did not pass urine or stool. When her managers announced in 1999 that she would soon transform into a lifeless statue of Saraswati, the police was alarmed. In cooperation with them, our young rationalist investigators and physicians verified room, her room and found the entry to a little toilet hidden behind a shelf and brick hole through which she received food. The blood test revealed the presence of glucose. When finally a harmless gas causing vomiting sensation was released in her room, she produced pieces of chapati, that's a wheat, uh, based food product and some potatoes. The confused woman turned out to be a mental case and was admitted to a local government hospital for some time. We never got a chance to directly encounter Prahlad Jani. The doors of Sterling Hospital remained firmly closed. What happened inside during Dr. Shah's test remained a matter of speculation. Reports inform that the old man was in good health and physically normal condition, except for a hole in the palate. No mentioning of Ambaji's tricking Amrit, but some puzzling details transpired between the lines. Urine in the bladder vanished. Stool and gas in the gut vanished. Body weight entries vanished. Suspicious blood sugar entries vanished. Mouthwash and water, not fraud proof. Allowed to receive devotees. According to BB's report, he was allowed to receive several devotees outside this room. Though he did not pass urine or stool, we heard it appeared that urine was forming in his bladder. He could, how could that happen? if he did not drink a drop. He was given daily 100 milliliter of water for mouthwash under strict control, we heard. And we saw pictures of him taking a bath. Perhaps the monitoring was not that too strict. A slight dropping of his weight was admitted, causing doubt on the claim to the fasting since years. Finally, Dr. Shah attested the protege, impeccable abstinence from food and water during uh, observation period. 10 days are not 64 years. But the man of science so authoritatively presented his attempt to understand how, not if, but how, Jani had been able to remain without food and water for so many years that he lent enormous credence to the Fakir's absurd claims. What matters was not actually the result of the study, but it was the atmosphere that it created. This was reflected in numerous damn serious press reports in India and abroad. Much additional respect created the shocking fact that Dr. Shah's research project, as it turned out, enjoyed funding and support from the Ministry of Defense of Government of India. The widely propagated claim that even America's National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, was involved could not be confirmed. Similar claims in connection with Dr. Shah's research in the case of Hira Ratan Manek in 2001 has been officially denied by the misrepresented NASA. The Ministry of Defense connection was prestigious. Dr. Shah passed the fellow of a state authority. He also used to escape skeptical scrutiny. It allowed him to keep his research results under wraps by just referring importantly, to special guidelines, do not disclose any details about Jani. Why the Ministry of Defense fell in the facing circus, to, to, sorry, why the Ministry of Defense fell for the fasting circus remains disturbingly unclear. Could the authorities be so gullible as to believe the Fakir story and even pay for it? Were they already dallying with the idea of putting Indian soldiers on sunshine diet? Or could there be something else in the case, for example, corruption? We are still trying to find out. Seven years later, 
In April 2010, Prahla Jani project went into a second round. This time, the spotlight was on the new vibrant Indian television scene. Again, it was financed by the demonstratively supervised uh, by the Indian Defense Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences, a special wing of Ministry of Defense. The, the Physiology and Allied Sciences Director, one Dr. Govindan Ilangovin, participated personally as active figurehead of the study. He told the press that the results of the observations could tremendously benefit mankind, as well as soldiers, victims of calamities, and astronauts. Anticipating rationalist curiosity, it was also clarified that the study findings would be confidential until results were established and that they inside and that any inside analysis information may be disclosed only at the discretion of the principal investigator, the DIPAS, the Stonewall critics. On April 22nd, fasting star Jani meantime 81 years, returned to the closed room of the Sterling Hospital, now equipped with a round-the-clock recording CCTV system. Select clippings were released to TV channels. A 35-strong team subjected Jani for 15 days of elaborate medical testing routines. There seemed to be no loopholes, but still they were. And again, I succeeded in exposing them from outside. While the test was running, I was invited to participate in numerous TV discussions. Since I had experience with similar cases, I noticed within a splinter second that there was something wrong. When during a live program in India TV, a certain official clipping from the hospital CCTV circular was played in. In fact, for some seconds, it showed Joanne Jani swiftly moving out of the CCTV camera's field of study, perhaps to sip some juice. I'll show that exact part. और थोड़ी देर के बाद वो अपने कमरे में वापस लौट आते हैं और वो सो जाते हैं हो सकता है कमरे से बाहर निकलकर चोरी चोरी चुपके चुपके प्रहलाद जानी कुछ खा लेते होंगे इट सेज दैट सीक्रेटली दिस वाज इन अ लाइव टेलीविजन प्रोग्राम सीक्रेटली ही हैज गॉन आउट अपेरेंटली टू ड्रिंक अ आई मीन लिटिल जूस ऑफ आई मीन अ ग्लास ऑफ जूस और मेबी अ क्रंप ऑफ फूड but I immediately pointed out what I had observed. The clip was replayed and replayed and replayed. I was correct. The incriminating video clip did not ever appear in any channel again. It was withdrawn. But we got it and we used it. That was more. Uh, we found video proof that Jani was allowed to receive a devotees and understood that he could even leave the closed room uh, for unrecorded sunbath. We got hints that his regular gargling and bathing activities were, as already assumed in 2003, not sufficiently monitored. This is the 2000 clipping where he was not in touch with water. This, this was secretly recorded where he was simply taking water. So every, every mug of water, he could gulp in whatever he wanted. With my trophies in hand, I again demanded an opportunity to check the test set up with an independent team of rationalist experts. There was no immediate re reaction from Ahmedabad, but before the program ended, a phone call from the Sterling Hospital invited me live to join the test next day itself. Grant applause. 
but early morning ready to fly to gujarat we were informed that we had to wait for the permission from top boss for the project needless to say the permission never came dr sudhisha had a long record uh, of research projects about dubious fasting stars in 2001 he famously tested the retired mechanical engineer a sun gazer hira ratan manek called hrm for 411 days who claimed he did not eat since 1995 dr shah the same dr shah attested him that during the whole long period he had been feeding on sunshine and a little water only a somewhat dubious research as manek was obviously not under strict medical observation he had in contact with many people went out for an excursion and climbed on some mountains together with 500 followers manek claimed that his fasting power was also tested in philadelphia's thomas jefferson university which the us scientists allegedly involved have strictly denied in 2000 during the official fasting years he was incidentally caught by a young medical doctor and a rationalist activist on a train journey in kerala munching away a double portion of deep fried vadas <laughs> a heavy but irresistible south indian delicacy <laughs> dr shah's research report about the hrm phenomenon never made it to any scientific paper by the way to my knowledge none of shah's numerous fasting studies have been validated by any well known scientific or medical journal so far obviously he does not want the nobel prize as a deeply religious jain and the president of the indian jain doctors federation dr shah seems to be inspired by the religious fasting of a great of great jain monks sanyasis and munis of ancient times i assume that it is a classical religious zeal that sometimes clouds his research eyes and the cctv cameras in the hospital interestingly many members of his research teams as well as fasting star hrm belong to the jain community too however dr shah's favorite theory that humans can stop eating and drinking switch to other ener- energy sources sunlight being one is selling far beyond the jain's community in international esoteric circles like a hot cake breatharianism is a dangerous pseudo science that has claimed many life while making some of the practitioners enormously rich breatharian star ellen grave alias jasmuhin the fragrance of eternity claims she was living since 1992 on light energy only in expensive workshops she teaches the tricks of the trade if you are talented you can study the change study to change your dna from 2 to 12 strings to absorb more hydrogen and <laughs> and abandon eating and drinking for good and that is how the lady claimed she did it if you are not you could just die while trying to imitate her at least three of her followers have suffered this fate Jasmuhin who lives in Australia seems to have thousands of followers many in Germany and some in Switzerland in 1999 her long time fasting experiment on the Austrian TV show 60 minutes was stopped on day 4 by the supervising doctor he diagnosed life threatening dehydration rapid weight loss and, kit- and and the kidney failure risk but never mind the business goes on then there is willy brooks founder of the Breatharian Institute of America. His courses are slightly expensive, but he has a heart for the beginners. You start, uh, the way of way to fasting stardom with cheeseburgers, because they are ideal base frequency. And Diet Coke, that's a liquid light. <laughs> If you manage, If you manage the incantation of the five fifth dimensional words and uh, survive up to the immortality workshop, you have to cough up one billion dollar. With an initial deposit of 10 million, 
in case sometimes it goes wrong. One of the oldest faces of Brutherian ancestral, one of the oldest faces in Brutherian's ancestral portrait gallery, by the way, is the national saint of Switzerland, Nicholas of Flew. According to legend, Brother Klaus survived for 19 years with no food except, of course, Eucharist. Coming back to Prahlad Jani, I never was given an opportunity to meet him personally, nor any of my rationalist colleagues. During Dr. Shah's test, Jani was kept in safe custody of Terling Hospital. And after each test, he seemed to have vanished into thin air. Allegedly, he has gone to Himalayas. There are also no independent interviews or firm film recordings that show him outside the realm of his powerful protectors. Since the last appearance on the, of the holy man on Indian television, I tried to contact him more than 50 times. No, he's not reachable. The protectors and protagonists of the holy man Prahlad Jani know that he is a valuable asset. The charlatan is in their safe custody. Thank you very much. If you have any question, if you have any question, one or two, I could answer that. Big pardon? Yeah. If you have any questions, please. Yeah. Hi. My question is: um, Is this? really a big phenomenon in India because, I mean, I'm astonished every day about these claims, but is this really widespread? Yeah, this story is so widespread that uh, we have, uh, uh, in India, there are more than 200 television channels and uh, around 150 television channels have been speaking almost every day more than two hours about this thing when this was happening. And all over the world, this was reported in United States, in Austria, in Australia, uh, Britain, everywhere this was recorded. I had queries after the discussion from at least 200 people whether it's really possible. And many people wanted to know how can we study the trick to survive like that. And this is a very wide phenomenon and a lot of people really try to defend him, his position because that fits to the belief system of uh, the fasting sadhus of Hindus or, or the Jain Munis who are believed to be surviving without food for a long time, but not now, but allegedly in the ancient times. Yeah. No question? Over there, yeah. Um, we, we know that fasting plays a role in various cultures, and what I'm wondering about is uh, why is it that uh, all over the world, especially these people who, who claim to fast for long periods, uh, say they live on light? Uh, is, is there something magical about light in, in, in there that... that uh, that makes, uh, makes these claims so interesting. I mean, they could just as well just be claiming to not eat. Uh, in, in fact, uh, when Prahlad Jani's original case came, he did not speak about light at the original claim. He spoke about a magical nectar coming into his mouth because of the, uh, the touching of the goddess. But later, apparently with the influence of the Brutherian movement, he was presented, was taking sunlight, and uh, absorbing into his body into energy. That was the claim that came later. But uh, Ratanlal Manek, on the other side, claimed that he straight away takes energy from the sun and water and something like a plant would survive, he survives. But uh, the connection of uh, light could be sun being seen as a source of energy, perhaps that would become a very easy magical explanation how a person could survive. 
But in India, fasting is very important because uh, it's a political weapon that has been used by the father of the nation, Gandhi, during independence struggle at many stages. And very recently also there was a very famous uh, hunger strike which, which was getting a lot of momentum against corruption. It catches the imagination of people. Somehow one feels that if you don't eat, you are a holy man. Hello, my name is Klaus Rieger. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, the YouTube video from uh, with you and the man who wants to kill you with a knife. And my question is, how can you withstand one hour or even more? Uh, I, I couldn't never stand so long in front of a man with a knife and uh, he put really a knife in your face. And so, uh, don't you fear? And haven't you got uh, any fears? <laughs> well, I mean, to to. That's a very interesting question which many people have asked me. It was not one hour, but in fact three hours standing and half of the time maybe he was shaking my head. <laughs> and it was not like a head massage, but he was really shaking my head and trying to press my temple and I mean on my back of my neck and all which sometimes I had to resist physically. Perhaps the reason that I'm never afraid on these kind of things was I was born to two free thinkers. My mother and father were free thinkers. And I was not indoctrinated with the stories of demons and spirits and all these things in my childhood. And I grew up as a nat natural person. And these stories came to me much later. Perhaps that helped me. And three hours, I could simply laugh and make a lot of joke at the whole thing. And because the, the television program was running, and uh, I was so sure that millions and millions and of people are watching the show. And uh, the message that I give with my, my laughing or my response to the guy would be taking out fear from a lot of people. I wanted to do it like that. And of course, it was a tiresome three hours. Uh, the later part, of course, I, could, I was allowed to sit, but this first part was enormously tiresome. And I was really afraid someday, not of the magical powers, but because of the knives, because many times he brought and played it in front of my eyes so that, I mean, I could be scared. And uh, many times he made gestures as if he stabbed me. I mean, obviously what he meant was to build up some scare, and normal person in, in such a situation would just faint down out of fear, or out of simple tiredness or boredom, that's also possible. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I, I, had to, I had to laugh and counter it. And uh, of course, the second part of the game, that was more dangerous. The first part was easy, because uh, it was a spontaneous challenge, and he could not prepare for it. The second part, he had five hours. Of course, he went in for what all preparations the Tantra asked him. Meantime, I knew later, of course, that he was talking with experts, how could I be poisoned at that time? Because uh, I, 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 also, I also suddenly consulted with a lot of toxic experts, because I was sure that he could not do anything with his Tantra, but of course he could take the support of science, or take some chloroform and bring it near my nose. I would just faint down. Or, could use poisons, for example, based on phosphorus and touch my skin with that thing. It could burn and go in. So all these possibilities we have studied, we made all precautions. And uh, every time when he wanted to bring something close to my nose, I said, first on your nose. <laughs> so at the end of the show, when everything was gone, I saw him sitting down, very tired, and I asked him, are you still alive? <laughs> he said, but you will die this night. <laughs> I said, okay, but if I die of a heart attack or an accident, you are not responsible. You wanted to kill me right that moment. Next day morning, of course, the Indian televisions and newspapers celebrated the story, and uh, many newspapers printed. They waited for the final result at 12 o'clock to print the last edition. I mean, of course, it came with my survival only. And uh, the tantric was <laughs> asked, what will now happen? He said, he will die in three days. After three days, he went into another television channel and said that, but in 21 days, he would die. Now it's three and a half years later now. <laughs> but maybe after some years, I would die and he would still claim, my mantra, what? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.